We are now full swing into the season of Lent. But what really is Lent? Maybe you associate Lent with giving things up like chocolate or social media, or maybe you associate Lent with taking things on like devotional series or meditation. Maybe you associate Lent with eating fish on Fridays or the color purple or that weird time when we can't say certain words. Maybe you view Lent as simply the time between Ash Wednesday and Easter. Lent is often traditionally defined as a period of preparation for Easter, more specifically foreshadowing Jesus' sacrifice and God's promise of mercy and love. The entire season is 40 days long, not including Sundays, and the significance of 40 days comes from the 40 days that Jesus spent in the wilderness when he endured hunger, thirst, and temptation. This story can be found in most detail in Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 to 11 and Luke chapter 4 verses 1 to 13, and it is also briefly mentioned in Mark chapter 1 verses 12 to 13. In the early church, periods of fasting were often observed leading up to Easter celebrations, but Lenten traditions were not formalized until around the first Council of Nicaea in 325 Common Era. Throughout the Middle Ages and into the Reformation, fasting remained a very central part of Lenten practices, mimicking Christ's fast in the wilderness. Along with fasting, almsgiving, that is, providing money and resources for those in need, and penance, which is an act of confession seeking absolution, were also common traditions. In today's context, this seasonal fast has often been reinterpreted to mean more than just food especially taking into account the importance of balanced nutritional intake during this long season that Lent is. From antiquity to present day, two things have remained very similar in our Lenten traditions. Inward focus on ourselves, and outward focus on our neighbors around us. One of the main goals of Lenten traditions is the centering of oneself, in spiritual practice and intentionality. That's one of the main points behind fasting too, turning our cravings and our desires towards spiritual growth of oneself and one's neighbor. Whatever you choose to do or not do, to give up or to take on, whether personal or interpersonal, remember to keep these things in sight the sacrificial love of God in your life, and our preparation for hope of salvation to come.